has one interconnected ocean, a vast blue expanse critical to life on Earth. And there's no better animal to represent the story of the ocean with all its splendor and uncertainty than the killer whale, or as it's scientifically known, the Orsinus orca. The orca lives in every corner of the ocean, from the Arctic to the Atlantic, the Southern to the Indian, to the mighty Pacific and beyond. This whale's story is the ocean's story, and it is one we all share. describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, prey, social structure, and habitat. As you can see, the differences are subtle, but noticeable when compared side by side. Orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments. And even the whale's black and white coloration has a purpose. It camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water, making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey. When viewed from above, the black of the whale blends in with the dark depths of the ocean. When viewed from below, the orca's white bellies match the brighter surface of the water, blending with the light above, giving them the perfect camouflage.
The flippers on either side of the body are called pectoral flippers, which are mainly used for steering and stomping. Pectoral flippers have five bony discs inside them, just like the human hand. The lobes on either side of the tail are called flukes. The tail flukes are the killer whale's engine, propelling them close to speeds of up to 30 miles per hour, just as fast as our speedboats. And they use the most power and generate the most energy when they're propelling their nearly 10,000 pound body out of the water. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orca pod is always led by a female. Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks for echolocation or navigation. <coughs> Whistles to socialize in the pod. And calls for group coordination and hunting. studies here at SeaWorld show that early on, calves learn vocalization from their mothers. But as they grow, they learn from others close to them as well. This is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld. In fact, orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family. here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Like all animals, killer whales use body language as a part of their communication. They use pet slaps to show dominance or to get noticed. For example, a mother may use a pet slap to get her cat's attention. Killer whales work together to rear their young, protect their pod, and most importantly, pursue and catch their prey. 
Every day they cooperate to survive in the wild oceans of the world. The orca's hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle herring, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herring. With the fish confused and contained, the whales stun them with their powerful tail flukes, making for an easy meal. We see the larger male orcas surround a sperm whale forming a perimeter, while the females continue to drive the whale forward until it reaches exhaustion. The calves then move in to join the adults in the group. Whatever their prey, killer whales always cooperate and hunt together, making them a highly successful predator.
rub their bellies on rocks when they can. We often see our whales display the same behavior, just the same as whales in British Columbia. imitating each other in the wild. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. The whales are always mimicking and learning from each other. And many of these behaviors you've seen today is a way for killer whales to stun their fish. And hopefully today, our killer whales will be stunning all of you. <laughs> here at SeaWorld have helped killer whales in the wild by participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whale's heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. In another study, scientists from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. Other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective model to understand how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. 
What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you've supported our rescue, research, and conservation efforts all around the world. If we work together, like the killer whale, we can protect the future of the Orsinus orca and this beautiful planet that we all share.